What's up guys, I'm Pause Build, and welcome back to our ethical zoo in Planet Zoo. Now that we've finished our Chris's house by building an Oceania section and putting our Egyptian fruit bats in, I think it's time we expand the zoo by putting in a new multi-species habitat in this video. And look at that beautiful sunrise over our zoo. Oh, the, the graphics of this game are so cool sometimes. <laughs> Speaking of sun, our bat enclosure, loads of you pointed out, and I hadn't even thought about it, which is crazy. I can't believe I missed it. But obviously, if we're building an ethical um, habitat for these guys, they're nocturnal, as you can see in this photo. <laughs> so they should really be in the dark and bless them there. They're hiding in their little boxes. But what we need to do is when we've researched them a bit more, we can get a nice, uh, like we can, we can re-edit this habitat, put in all of the layout stuff that we don't have yet, and then design it to probably be more like a cave environment. But for now, I think what we'll do just to make sure that they're, they're a bit like more hidden, is we could just, I tell you what, we'll put none and we'll cover it over in wood so that it matches everything else. And uh, that way it's uh, not as not as crazy as it is now um, because, oh, I mean, at the minute they could escape, so let's pause. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it just, it just we just need to have it so that it's it's covered and it's, it's dark for them because they're gonna have some light coming through here, but that's probably fine because it's very dim light coming through the sides but we want that kind of cave-like darkness. So it's a little bit of a dark walkway, but it'll be absolutely fine for our guests and the bats will be in it, like housed more ethically. So I'm just gonna add some wood to it now. Okay, we've just expanded this section basically um, and made it wood on the outside so it kind of fits in. And now inside we've still got the uh, the wire mesh here. Oh, we've got animal welfare, welfare issues. Let's go to these guys. What's wrong with you? Nutrition. Oh, I think you need the keeper. There's not enough keepers on helping you guys out. Okay, let's see how many keepers we have. We've not got many staff here. I'm just going to train up everyone as well to their next level. And then we've only got two keepers. Let's grab another keeper and assign them to the central hub as well. And we should probably also get another vet. Let's just check our finances. Oh yeah, I think we're good, we're, we're good. And that's with loads of purchases as well. So we're, I think we're steadily ongoing expenses and our income is quite steadily higher than that. So that's good. Let's get another vet because we need to keep in improving our vet research as well. And look, on our vet research, we've already got some. So we can reassign the vets we do have to some of our other animals. Now, one of the things I mentioned about the Egyptian fruit bat was we get the layouts when we research them. That's that's true on all of the exhibit species. So I've just assigned all of our vets to research the species we have that are in exhibits. And as they unlock things, certain levels of it are exhibit enrichment. And that's where it's gonna change the look of the habitat. And uh, when that's all done for the fruit bats, I think we will uh, we'll redesign the inside of this a bit. Cause at the minute it's just wood. And we may end up with like different flooring and everything, like I'm fine with that. But uh, you can see our careful blend of guests being people eating pizza and people struggling to not wet themselves, <laughs> which I, I love. I kind of love. And I think it's finally time to add some toilets into our zoo. I mean, what episode are we now? <laughs> Just getting our first toilets. But let's do it. Let's give them a toilet in here, as I said in the last episode.
Now, I've just made the toilets, and I was going to put this this uh, plank here just to have, like, an entrance that matches the floor, but it's not really very wheelchair-friendly, so I might just delete it, because otherwise there's, there's no real need for a step. Um, it just changes floor texture, and they're really annoying, because you can't really... There's no wood pieces that align in a straight line with this, uh, this building, but it's okay. It's just a dark void where people go to the toilet. So you have a gender-neutral toilet. They go in there, they come out here. Um, I think that works. And obviously this would be where the toilet is inside, inside the building. Uh, we could put a little bit of decoration on here. Uh, maybe like, uh, what have we got in here? There we go. We've got a few leaves on there. That, that kind of spices it up. And then I think here we'll put some... Oh my goodness, is everyone... How are you doing that? Um, I don't like that. Where are you going? How are they... Oh, they're just coming through there. <laughs> okay, well, that's not good. Let's put a guest barrier. Um, where is that? Bins, bench, and security. Let's put one in here, right at the edge. And um, we we'll just sink this down here, and then guests won't be able to, uh, to come through. So that should stop them. And the same here on the doorway. We don't really want them coming through here. There we go. So those just, they've just disappeared there because they can't go through there anymore. So, oh, at least I think they can't. Let's see what happens. Okay. <laughs> That's what you want. Right, let's put this one here. There must be a little gap I've missed. I think this has worked. This has stopped them now. He's, he's very confused. Um, what we're going to do now is put in some guest benches down here. And seeing as this one doesn't really have much of a theme in this area, I'm just going to put some, some new world benching. And that's just going to let them sit while they wait for people to go to the toilet more than anything else. And provide people with an opportunity to rest if they do need to sit down. Oh dear, animal welfare has attracted protesters. Why is that? What's going on with you? Oh, okay, you're really hungry. Right, well, let's, let's move you over to where the food is which is over here. And we'll make sure we call a keeper right now. Okay, this is really not good for an ethical zoo. Where's the keeper? Oh, they're here. You're feeding. Okay. Well, just do it quicker. <laughs> the anteaters and the main wolves are coming over for food. So hopefully they will feed them soon and they'll feed them in here. Look at the little baby capybara. Um, they'll feed them in here and they'll get their food very shortly. We do just need to keep an eye on all our staff. Oh, cool. We've, we're plowing through research. We need to keep an eye on all of our staff and make sure they're as trained up as they can be. So I'm just going to keep doing this training periodically. I think this is enough keepers for how many animals we have. Um, it's just that none of them are very trained up. So it's only one of them a high workload at the minute. Oh, I'm going to pause because we're about to inbreed as well. Do not do that, please. This must be Caroline has become older. Oh, no, it's Mango. It's not Caroline. Let's take her off. Mango has become... An older boy. I'm going to leave him in and just put him on contraceptives. I don't want to, to sell him or um, trade him out of the zoo, sorry, or, or release him into the wild. But we could just keep him in the family for now. He's just another male. I don't think they fight. I'm pretty sure Capybara. Let's look them up. Capybara. Yeah, up to nine males and 19 females. So they're okay. They have a dominance hierarchy. So, but it says all male offspring are to tolerated in the group. So that's good. The, the dad won't attack the, the son as long as they're not competing, I guess. Uh, but so if we put them on contraceptives, it should all be fine. They're not going to inbreed and they're not going to fight, which is kind of what you want. And um, we've got a little toilet area in here now. So guests can finally go to the toilet. Let's add this into our work zones so our cleaners can clean the toilets as well. Kind of a key role for their job. And we do need to get in a new habitat. So we're gonna put something over here. Wow, our information center is popping right now. Let's let's have another one right next to it. And have you there. And we'll put the new vendor in the central hub. Did we get a new vendor? Doesn't look like we did. Just looks like they're empty. Okay, it didn't come with a vendor. That's interesting, they normally do. Let's hire out a vendor and add them into the central hub. Hopefully they'll go jump into the... There you go. They're in the information stand already. So now you can migrate over and uh, 
be welcome to the zoo. It's just good because they'll sell them audio tours and animal donations as well, which is really good. We've got a decent number of vendors. I think our zoo's doing okay from a facility standpoint. Yeah, they're in high demand, which is good. Most of them are making money. Uh, I'm assuming this is, we've hit like a new, oh, okay. They must have not been here. We've not got enough vendors, it seems. Uh, because they're not all very well staffed. Maybe we should hire another vendor and just throw them into rotation, put them in the central hub, and they can, they can join the rotation and we should have enough. Now we need to make the large multi-species habitat that's gonna be the focal point of this episode. And for that, we need to look in the Zoopedia and check out what we're gonna have. So the first species we're gonna have is the red kangaroo. Now these guys live in groups of up to 10. So it's one male and up to nine females. So if we put in uh, 10 adults, that's 870 meters squared. That is gonna be the starting point we need to work out, right? What barriers do we need? We need at least 870 meters squared of, of, of land and we need grade three barriers that are taller than three meters. So like with the habitat we made over here, the South American one, we use the construction pieces because these effectively have an unlimited barrier um, grade. <laughs> Whereas if you use the barriers here, you have to pick like uh, brick has grade five, uh, wood is grade three, glass, glass is grade three, one way glass is grade two. Like you, you go through all of them and you can see what you need. But I think we're gonna use the construction pieces again here. And it needs to be at least three meters tall, which the four meter construction pieces are. Now the next species is the emu, which looks so derpy and I love them. <laughs> they live in groups of up to six. So it's up to five males and five females. So you need to have, I guess one of each, either, yeah, either five males and one female or five females, one male. Um, or just groups of five. You just can't have six of one. <laughs> okay, good to know. Uh, so let's say we've got six adults. That's 800 meters squared as well. So that's similar. That's good. Grade two and taller than 1.25 meters. Easy. The red-necked wallabies, which are adorable, live in groups of one to 30. Oh my goodness. Okay, one to 30. And they are going to, so let's put in, oh goodness, how many do you need here? Let's say we've got 22, 22? about 1200, maximum 1500 square meters. Okay, that's good to know. And it's grade two and same as the kangaroos with a taller than three, that's good to know. And finally, we've got Quokka. Is that how you say it? I'm not really sure, but they are one of the cutest things I think I've ever seen. <laughs> Look at their little faces. So they've groups of one to 24, which is 23 males on 23 females. Uh, quite like the emus earlier, where it's just, you have, need to have one of each, I think. And if we put in 24 adults, that's a thousand meters squared. Okay. Um, and they, oh, you can block them off with water. So they obviously can't swim very well. So it's three meters wide water and one meter deep. But again, we're gonna be using fencing and their grade requirements and height requirements are tiny. So they're not gonna be an issue. Really, I think the kangaroo are probably the most as you would assume from these uh, barrier destroyers, <laughs> they're the most demanding having the the three grade three and taller than three meters. We just need to make sure we have enough space for everyone. And I think the longest we had for that was 1500. So pause fail number one of this series. I managed to stop recording just after talking about the animals and uh, started building away at the habitat. Um, and I wasn't recording. So I'm gonna show you what I did, because basically we're gonna be using null barriers, which are these invisible barriers, and then putting in our own construction pieces. What I did was I went for the Australian uh, pieces from the content pack, because we've got the Australia and the Oceania, that, Oceania, that they aren't actually any pieces. We've just got this uh, Kiwi. <laughs> so ignoring that, uh, we used Australia pack pieces and put together a fence that I liked. And to do that, I basically used Australia wood. I found the large window, uh, placed that down, and then made a two piece, then found some logs, and started decorating this basically. So we've got like one there, one in the middle, and one at the end. And then I put in some shade because shade is becoming kind of an issue in our zoo. Like guests are complaining about being too hot. And one of the things you can do to sort that out is make sure they have shade. And I'm just remembering what I did was actually, I, I did this exact thing, <laughs> put one in the middle and I was like, oh no, I'll have, the, I'll have the shade in the middle. So we have a little canopy. Um, so made something like this. I put glass in as well, just in the middle, which you can do by searching for glass. And I use, I normally use this modern wall panel, the thin glass, because I quite like that. I don't want it to be really thick. Um, and just basically put this centrally. 
So it doesn't overlap too much and did it for both of them. So you've got something like this. And then what you can do is you can just hit hold down control um, and select everything and then control D and place another one and build a fence up like this. And then I just went through and deleted uh, these posts where they overlap. So you just have one on each of them. But you can see you can get quite a nice post. And then if you go into the, your null barriers, you just make sure the barriers on the outside and you can quite easily paint in an area. And the only tricky part is the door, because when you put a habitat gate in, you then have to like build around it. So I did have to go into these small Australia pieces, which are very annoying <laughs> to have to do. Um, but where are they? Like these 1.2 meter panels. And if you if you kind of line them up, you can make a bit of a door frame around it um, that, that fits in between the logs. So I just did that on either side and, and kind of merged it into the scenery that we've got. Um, I'm just going to delete all of this now because I can show you the finished article. <laughs> Ta-da! This is what we've done. So I've just done this the whole way around, made a nice barrier. And if I click on the door, which is over here, you can see it's 10,000 meters. Uh, so it's quite large, <laughs> but I'd rather be too big. It's an ethical zoo series. Um, I also made sure to put the window panels in here wherever there were, there were windows from the building. Otherwise, their light is going to be terrible. Um, if we don't let light come through here. I mean, it's not to look out and view everything, but just for some realism, you wouldn't you wouldn't make a window and then put just wooden, like a wooden plank against it, basically. Uh, it's not really the, the minimum light levels you need. And on the entrance here, I just put, there's the door where I use some wooden logs quite frivolously. <laughs> uh, for the door here, um, I put a little entrance area and I just made a, used a wire mesh piece, um, and then just some conservation cladding beams around the outside. So we've got a bit of a, an entrance gate. And, and I put this in because basically if animals are having issues or there's some kind of stress going on, we can, we can put them in here to stop them fighting and close the door and tend to them. Or if, you know, if any of them are injured or we've got pregnant animals that we're worried about being around the rest of them, we could take them in here and, you know, lure them in with some food probably and then uh, close the gate and the others can't get in here. So that's the plan. It's just a small area over here. It's not their shelter. We will be putting in a shelter, although it does need a roof. Now I think about it, we're going to need to put a roof on it um, in case it's raining while that happens. Uh, but I think if this would be a good location for one of the shelters. And then we might put another shelter in over here. I'm just conscious we've got quite a lot of animals going in here with it being four species. So we need to make sure that they're not kept together. And uh, we can also delete these trees, which uh, nets us some money back for some reason. Uh, which doesn't happen in the real world. Oh no, it's minus 80. Okay, I thought it was plus 80. <laughs> I was going to say you definitely don't get paid to remove trees in the real world. Now that we've got our kind of habitat here and this grassy patch here, this is short grass, just where I built a path and then I was like, no, I want it to be bigger because you've got a path going the whole way along the outside. I just, I just had to move over our information center a little. Uh, and I got a couple, I got two more vendors as well because these keep being out of, out of order and the same with the chief beef. So I hired a couple of vendors. So now our roster is this many vendors, a decent amount. Uh, we just need to make sure they're all being trained up. And the other person I bought is a security guard. So this is our action man over here. Look at him walking, <laughs> walking like he owns the place. Uh, this is Elwood, our security guard. Oh, goodness. We've got lots of diseased animals. What's going on here? Okay. Well, right. Let's, let's definitely... The vet's being called for these guys. That's really not good. It must be that one of them got sick. Why are they sick? Um, let's check the water. Is it you? Yes. Oh, that's annoying. Okay. So the water treatment needs uh, urgently replacing. And let's put this on every three months uh, to fix that. How's our mechanic doing? Basically, what's happened is the water pump hasn't been maintaining the water and they've gotten sick because of it. Uh, are both our water areas captured in here? Yeah, they are. Okay, that's fine. As long as it crosses any portion of it, um, the water goes blue and you know it's captured. But I think they may not, it may not be clean. So that's, the, that's maybe why they've gotten sick. Okay, we've got a lot of vets working, so that should be okay. Let's go on our vet research. Maybe I'll just take them off. Okay, they're all doing well. Let's just stop you researching. You can all... I'll tell you what, why doesn't one of you... One of you research the active disease, and the other two start grabbing animals <laughs> and quarantining them if they're sick. You can kind of go in manually and help out with this by selecting these guys and then saying request quarantine. 
So I think I'll do that for all of them that are sick at the minute. It's just the capybara at the minute, but I've just noticed as well that Loki has now finally matured. So they are going to start fighting with the other main dwarves, which is not what we want at all. So I'm going to send them to the trade center now, uh, which means they'll get boxed up and they'll go to a trade center. And then we can decide what we want to do with them from there. So let's go to the animal storage. Now we can release them to the wild for 70 conservation credits, or we could quick trade them um, or trade them for 134. I think... Basically, I think we'll just release into the wild because I'd rather do that generally. That's kind of the point of, of conservation zoos. And I know we haven't explicitly said we are, but we're an ethical zoo. And what's a, what better reason is there to have animals than to breed them, increase their numbers and prepare them for being released back into the wild. So let's release them for 71 credits. Our first animal is gone from the zoo. Oh, it's quite sad. <laughs> Well, at least they didn't die in the zoo. That's that's what you. That's definitely not what you want. So uh, this this is a much better alternative. Now we are getting more disease animals. Oh, okay. Let's quarantine you as well. Just every time they come up, I'm just gonna click quarantine and make sure that they're all getting quarantined. The alerts go if you click quarantine. So I think that means they're on it. There we go. They're being boxed up. Our quarantine is gonna be full get some nice treatment in the void <laughs> uh, but they were basically they'll put them in quarantine and then they'll move them into the vet surgery which i think is this building here there oh there you go oh please look after them who's this here this is callie and um, being looked after by dion come on dion do your best work okay i think they may be okay they're probably taking them back now which is good that's a good sign and the next one's coming in. See, our ethical zoo, we've got a whole team of vets. We've got two of them in here, and then we've got, we should have another vet in here. Oh, they're slacking. <laughs> we should have another vet in here that's actively researching the disease that's going on, so that if we get it in future, it'll be much quicker to treat, or if they can research it now, it'll be quicker to treat already. Uh, but yeah, they must be, Valentine must be in the, uh, in the staff room or something. Probably in here, chilling out. No? Are you just doing the rounds? Maybe they're transporting. That's Dion. Who's this? That's Valentine. Okay, they're just... Oh, they're, they're taking it in turns. All right, that's fine. Well, I'll leave them to do that for a bit. They can go through, treat all the animals. And, uh, and then I can see they're getting released back in, which is what we want. Quarantining any of them that get sick. Oh, okay, the inspector's arrived. This is not a good time for us. Please be friendly, zoo inspector. Um, they're coming to look at the capybara, main wolf, and giant anteaters, so please be nice. Let's get ourselves some emus to kick this off. Okay, we've got a few males here. Uh, do we have any females? No, we just have males at the minute. What group sizes do males need? Okay, it's one to six. We can just get one boy. Let's do that for now. Let's get a male. Um, oh, how long do they live? That's the other question. They live to 15 years old. Okay, so five isn't too bad. They're probably a good breeding age. That could be a lot worse. I'm gonna opt, oh, there's a female here as well. Let's grab her. She's not huge in size, but that's fine. Um, and then let's get a nice, good male. Let's, let's order them by appeal. And then find them that are going for cash, because I'd rather use cash to buy them. And if they're from Frontier Zoo, we know they're not related. So that's a, that's a good thing to consider. Let's get this, this male here. Okay, so we've got one of each. That's quite good. Let's grab our emus and send them to the void known as quarantine. Now let's go. What should we do next? The rednecked wallabies. Let's do those. Rednecked wallaby. Oh, we've got a few here. Okay, let's, let's sort by appeal. Um, let's grab this male. Oh, how many males was it? Wasn't this? You could have multiple. Rednecked wallabies. Uh, yes. All mature offspring are tolerated in the group. Oh, because they're nice. That, that's that's what we learned. Because wallabies are friendly. Okay, let's sort by appeal. Um, we've got a male here from Frontier. Oh, that's not a very good male, though. Uh, this female's good. Let's get her. Okay, and then I think we'll get this male as well. And maybe a third male. This one's okay. Let's grab this one. And maybe a fourth. We'll have four of them. What group sizes do they need? 
Yeah, that, I don't really want to get this one. He's not very good genetically. So let's let's grab these four and move them into quarantine. Now, not it's not just our vets or our keepers that are doing this. Like our caretakers muck in as well. So there's, there's a lot of like animal movement around, but it's okay. We've got enough staff to cover it. Let's look at our quokka now. Please let me know in the comments how to actually pronounce this because I really have no idea. <laughs> Uh, this is quite a good one. Oh no, she's got immunity zero. We definitely don't want that. Um, let's get... This is quite a good male. Have a look at them on the Zoopedia again. Um, they can have a mix. All mature offspring are, uh, are tolerated. Large males are dominant. I don't really want them to fight. I think this means that they won't. So let's go for it and, uh, and see. Let's grab this female while she's available. Oh, she's got 0% immunity, but I think we're just going to need to grab her because otherwise we don't have any any females at all um and then we can grab a few males let's grab this one let's grab this one these are quite expensive uh what what size do they need it's one to 20 okay so it's just one is fine so i think we may need to just get a few of each and then we'll boost their numbers as we go um as more come onto the market Go to quarantine. And finally, our red kangaroo. Now, there's a female there. Let's grab her. She seems really good. These are all from Frontier as well. So, oh, there's another female. Another female. Not as good. I'm tempted just to get all of them, though. Let's grab them. And all the males are for credits, which I don't really want. Um, let's refresh. No, they're all for credits. Uh, this one isn't very many, but... I think we'll leave it for now. We'll get a male in a bit. And we're going to send these four females to quarantine. That's a lot of animals in quarantine. I'm not sure they'll all fit. But if they don't, they'll just give us a warning. And then once they've passed quarantine, which if we click on quarantine one, when they pass quarantine, uh, we can release them into the habitat. And basically, it just checks if they've got any issues. Like if they've got illnesses or wounds or anything, um, this will, the vets will pick it up in quarantine and then they'll take them into the vet surgery and treat them like they are the capybara. Oh, they're really rattling through the capybara. Bless them. I don't like that they're sick. Oh, there you go. One that's already passed and is ready to leave. Who's first? It's our male emu, Birani. We're going to need some new names for these animals. So I'm going to move him to Habitat 6. Let's move him through. We need to change the name of this as well because we're not having that as the name. What are we going to call this? Okay. I am going to call this Kangaroo, Emu, Wallaby, and Quokka. Because otherwise, how are we going to know what it is? And I'm going to put the and to be the sign instead of three letters. Because it makes it slightly shorter to read. Okay, our female Emu as well is ready. And so is our first Wallaby. I think we'll just move the Emu over for now. And we'll move the Wallabies together. Now we can test. Oh, they're in. They're in. Oh, this is amazing. Look at you. Oh, they're so weird. I love them. Wow. I think the females are slightly bigger than the males as well with the emu. Look at you go. They've got great view as well. Like everyone's got a great view of them from here. Now we do need to crucially check whether they can escape or not. I've just paused the game. We've got loads of issues come up. And basically that's just because we've not included this habitat in the work zone. So everyone's saying that they can't get to it. They can't, there you go, it's all gone. They can't treat the animals, etc., etc. So we've just added that in there by adding it into the central hub. We've got a few quarantines that have passed. I'm just gonna delete these alerts. And high amounts of litter. Okay, that is a problem. Ah, we've not put any bins or many bins throughout this area. Okay, uh, that's good to know. Let's just whack some bins in quickly. And let's check up on our poor caretaker as to handle everything. Oh, let's say they're happy and they've got an efficient workload. So maybe they are okay. Let's uh, let's just train everyone up again. And let them carry on. Look at our emu. Back to the emu cam. <laughs> oh, yes, we need to check. Let's go on our heat map. Click on habitat. And if we click on our emu, we can see everywhere that they can traverse. So they can get, they can access the whole of this habitat, which is perfect, but they can't escape because if they could escape, they'd be a walkable escape point. Like you'd see them very clearly flash up in red, climbable or jumpable escape points. So we need to check that for every species that we have in here that they can't get out because that would be very bad. 
and let's move our wallabies into the habitat now because they are causing a bit of a bottleneck on our quarantine now. We've got four wallabies going in. I mean, it's a bit boring for them, isn't it? Here? It's just a massive open plane. Now, one thing I do want to put in, which we can put in now, is if we go on barriers, there's a viewing dome entrance, which I do want to put in for this habitat. Now, I need to think about where we put this. Maybe it's a good idea to whack this over here. And then we can easily link it to the path with a four meter path. Okay, now if we go on our guest facilities, I think if we turn blueprints off, we should have a dome here somewhere. Ah, a viewing dome, there we go. So we can put these little viewing domes in and then link them to the, to the entrance there and people can go in and I guess it's like an underground tunnel that they can get to these viewing domes, but they could see our animals way better. So it's gonna massively increase the, uh, the, viewing, the viewing range. I wonder if we can see it on any kind of heat map. Um, that would be cool if we could. Security and crime as one. I don't think we can, but that would be cool. You can see that the do you can click dome network and you can see viewing dome one is linked to this and we can click the little location icon and here it is. Now I'm going to change these colors as well because I don't really, I want them to blend in a little bit more with the, the environment, but I'm going to wait to do that until after we've actually terrain painted this whole area. Uh, but for now, this is so cool that you could see there's a little stairs leading up and then they could see out. Um, we're going to put a couple more of these in just to improve the viewing radius and allow people to get, yeah, a bit of a sneak peek, I guess, into what it's like. And it's all, I'm assuming, one-way glass, so completely ethical for our zoo. Uh, they're just they're just having a better look. In fact, let's, ha let's have two there for now and then we'll build a shelter over here for the animals. So it's increased the, the viewing area and it's not too ridiculous. It's just a little underground path here. Oh no, yeah. Oh. Our poor iguanas are still having trouble. They're not like outside of the work zone or something crazy, are they? No, this is though. Okay, I thought they were then because <laughs> it moved. That's so annoying. Why is it always them who have issues? Like I swear all our other exhibit animals are absolutely fine. And then our green iguanas have serious issues. Ask the social health. I've been trying to cure it with this. Oh, because I crucially, oh yeah, there's loads of them in there. Look, there's four, you can see them in there. Um, I forgot one of the main things you need to do is management of our of our green iguana. So when you look at them on the Zoopedia, which we can bring up, you can see it's one to two and we've got loads of them. So what we need to do is click management, max males, one, max females, one, and then instead of store and trade center, we're just gonna sell them for cash. And then the same store and trade center, we're just gonna sell for cash. And that's how we're gonna, and we can turn on this manage population. And then you can see how many we, how much we earn a year. Um, there's a there's a limit to it, which I don't think has always been there. Maybe it has, but this is the limit of the money we can make from, from selling and breeding them. But essentially this will manage it for us so we don't have to come in and do it manually. Um, alternatively, we could send them to the trade center, but then they start to, the exhibit trading, they just start to block up our, <laughs> our animals in here. And I think it's easier to just have them, you know, constantly constantly get selling and, and coming in you know as soon as they basically if they exceed their population limit it will sell one of them and you can choose the priority um so probably yeah we could sell the oldest in here you can also order them by like the one that's going to get the most cash or conservation credits or appeal um maybe we'll do appeal and we'll keep we'll start basically we'll be breeding the highest appeal animals by keeping them i'm just going to do this for all of our animals now exactly the same as i just did with the same settings so you don't need to see all of that <laughs> now this also applies to our egyptian fruit bats which you can see right here um but they have a much larger group size if we look on the zoopedia they can have five to 35 and some of the snakes could have five i think this the the snails were six. So where, where that's happened, I've just put in management, manage them, but we've just put much higher limits on them. So if we, if it's 35, let's say 30, we have 15 males, 15 females. Um, I think that's what they have on the Zoopedia. 
five, oh, it just says five to 35, and it's a mix of them. So in actual fact, we could have, let's say 17 of each. We can have 34 or, go on, well, with the max. I just keep convincing myself to put more of them in. Okay, let's sell them for cash for appeal anyway. Um, sell for cash, appeal. I think this means that they're gonna sell the one, like they'll keep the ones with the highest appeal, but let me know, maybe they'll sell them like with the, maybe we wanna sell the lowest appeal. Let me know which one it is in the comments and I'll adjust it if we need to. This is our dome camera view. Oh, this is so interesting. Oh, look, they're here, the wallabies. <laughs> we can look with much better camera called our eyes. No, look at them. Oh, they're so cool. I love their tails, look at them. Oh, there's another one jumping in. Oh, they're adorable. I wanna see the jumper, go on, go on. Oh, don't stop just cause I'm looking at you. It's better than pooping, I guess. Oh, he's jumping again. Or well, she's jumping again. I think they're all female, aren't they? Oh, how many was it? Oh, this no, there's a male. There's a male. Was it three males and one female we got in the end? Yeah, there's a female over here. Oh, she's even cuter, actually, than the males. Let's look at our emus as well. They're not going to be super happy with their... They're actually not okay, to be honest. They're okay with their habitat generally. Um, it's just enrichment that he will seem to be lacking, but that's quite surprising. They're happy with like the terrain and everything pretty much. Uh, this is our female emu though, who's a bit taller and a bit scarier, I think, than our male. Oh, look, there's people in here. She's gonna go eat them. <laughs> I would be terrified if I were these guys right now. Look at that coming towards you. This is just on a camera. Imagine that in real life. That'd be terrifying. <laughs> Seeing them walk up so close though is very cool. That's a very cool view. So I'm glad we've got the uh, the viewing dome in there. It's going to create quite a queue, I think, probably here. But hey, it's okay. We can sort it out if it becomes a problem. And um, we've got lots of them are past quarantine. So let's put in, let's go one species at a time. Let's put in our quokka. In fact, if we only get three of these, I think we did. Let's just put in the kangaroo as well. Tell you what, I'll, I'll dismiss all of it. We'll let them put the quokka in and then we'll get some more kangaroo in there. We can also see if they've got any more like kangaroo and quokka because I don't think we got a male, did we, for the kangaroo? Another female here. Um, some more females. Oh, these are quite good. Okay, we've got a couple more female kangaroo. Um, but then we do need to, we do need to get a male. Let's just send these to quarantine as well. And the same with the quokka. We need some, we need some more variety, I think, but... Generally, these little populations are okay. I'm just going to keep adding them where we can. So we've only got one male and one female emu. So we need some more. I think we'll get some more females. Oh, this is in our trade center. This is what we have already. Uh, she's okay. Yeah, let's get her. And let's get this one at the bottom as well. And put those two in quarantine as well. And I think our quokka have just arrived in the habitat. So let's go check them out too. Oh, let's pause because before we do that, this is going to be losing us loads in donations because we're not doing anything. So let's go to our bins, benches and security and find our Australian ones. Where are they? Australia. Oh, that's our actual bin. No, we want guest facilities. <laughs> we want our donation bins, which we've already just got on the ground somewhere. We must have one. There you go. There's one here. We're going to grab this one duplicate and then we're just going to change the color and I'm going to whack this wherever we've got loads of viewing areas together like probably every three panels we'll put them in um let's change the color maybe this isn't an ideal spot for it let's 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 move you over here for this one one two three one two so it's going to be here and what color is this going to be maybe we'll just change out the yellow for more of like an orange I'm trying to find a good uh color let's reset that oh no not to blue Okay, no, let's let's not do that. Let's go here. This is kind of like a an Australian-y vibe. We're gonna go orange and white. That's good enough for me. Let's put another one here. And we're just gonna keep placing these around. And then we need to do some education boards next. Okay, we've got those in. I kind of put them every panel, like every other or every two panels. Oh my goodness, they're here. Look at them. Oh, they're little faces. Okay, let's look at them and then we'll do our education. Now we've got the donation bins in. We're not losing money. Look at them. They're, they're so weird. I love them. I mean, you're going to have to look very closely to get a good look at them. Or when they're up against the viewing dome, I guess. They're so small. 
They're really cute though. Oh, he's a female one as well. They look quite similar, I have to say. Look at them running around, little hops. They're quite happy with the environment too. I mean, this is, this is, I don't think this has ever happened really. I mean, they're going to be getting interspecies bonus and they don't have any food or anything though. That is a problem. I'm going to pause because I don't want them to not have any food. Let's see what everyone's thinking so far. Okay, it's just views. No one's saying that they're not healthy or <laughs> anything like that. That's good. That's good. Okay, let's check out what these guy, guys need. Okay, so our emus, as far as enrichment and everything, let's put a food, a large food bowl for them. Again, I think we'll focus our area. So this is going to be the kangaroo area um, because it's like the main, probably the most appealing area for, for guests. And it's the first thing they see when they come in. Then we can have maybe emus, wallabies and quokka over here. So our emus are going to be down here. Let's put their food right here. Uh, in fact, let's set it back a little bit. Let's have it about there. Um, then they use a bunch of other stuff. So they can have a forage box. They can have frozen block of fruit. I'm gonna have lots of their food just kind of in this area around here. Let's have a herb scent marker over here. A slow feeder around here. And then we can throw in, goodness, there's lots. So we can have a fixed roller feeder over here. And then put in some, some colorful balls, a small ball. And we are going to need some water, so maybe we'll put some ducks in, in a bit as well. They've also got fruit spike, fruit spike tree. Can they definitely use all of these things? Let's find the emu on here. No, they can't. Okay, I've been misplacing these. It must be because lots of animals have emu in the name. <laughs> so normally that works if you type in emu. But they can use most of them. Okay, so it was, it was mostly correct. The forage box is going to go here. Um, I just thought that was a lot of food options. The slow feeder can go here. Let's say, well, let's have the slow feeder over here. And then it's kind of like a feeding section, isn't it? Let's have a curio ball. Uh, the small colorful ball can be around here. Small ball over here. An ice ball. And a sprinkler. We're going to need that around a water source. Maybe we'll put a little drinking area here because we want our animals to be able to reach it. And I don't think this is going to be near any kind of water treatment, no. So we're going to need to put some water treatment in. I think what we're going to do is just put the water over here, um, but we need to move it far enough out that it doesn't have a negative impact on guests. There we go. We've got we've got a container in this little box here. <laughs> okay, it's not offending anyone. And now we can look at that. Should hopefully two percent of fifty. Okay, well let's put some some slats on. Only four. Okay, I'll take it. That's good enough for me. Um, where are we at now with it? Let's negative impact on guests. Okay, that's a good enough away. That's fine. Let's put a staff path in here and connect it back up. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll put a staff path with the curbs down. Um, like this. Um, also, if you if you see whenever I do that and I put the path in and it's like it wants to connect weirdly, I hold down control and then you can put the path wherever you want. And then sometimes it just finds a better solution. Like placing one here, it's sometimes easier to connect than uh, than if you already have one like over here and it's only letting you like, curve connect. It's really annoying, but it works. That, that solution kind of works. Let's put some Australia wood panels on the floor here. There you go. It's a little decking for them to get there. We could put a little rail on actually as well. So here's where I just get so carried away. <laughs> We're going to make this is how you make a fence in Planet Zoo tutorial. <laughs> and if you build a little fence section like this and hit control X, you can just move them along like that. And there you go. You've got a little fence going along. And there you go. A rough little fence that kind of works here. I might, I'm not super happy with it all. 
Uh, I might just move the whole thing in and that gets rid of the need for the little post at the end. Uh, but it, it's a it's a quick and dirty method of making a fence there. That's a very quick tutorial on how to do it. And there you go. We've got a little fence. So that kind of works. That, that's a bit better, isn't it? Um, and that's, that's the water treatment plant. Now our water will get us to here. So we need to put in a little watering hole for everyone. And I think maybe we'll just do a nice central watering hole that everyone uses rather than doing separate ones. I don't think any of them actually need water area, do they? Let's, uh, let's have a look at the animals. Okay, so kangaroos don't have water requirement. Neither do the redneck wallabies or the quokkas or the emus. Cool. So none of them need water. They only need it to drink. So we don't need to put in a massive area because none of them are really going to use it. So I think it's probably better to put it where you absolutely wouldn't put it with these viewing domes <laughs> and uh, stick it right in the middle of, of this section. Uh, this is too steep as well. We don't need it that deep. Okay, and I think what we do is we just put a water area here because we've got the viewing domes there. Let's whack the water area in this section. Um, is that that's something I've placed? Okay, let's move that out of the way first. That's the curio ball. Uh, let's put that over here. Um, now we can use the terrain editor to just push, and I think we want a large, just a fairly, a fairly large, quite shallow watering hole that everyone can use. Um, something like that's probably good. It goes quite close to the edge, so I might just raise the the terrain at the edge here, so it doesn't go quite so close. Yeah, something like that's quite good. I'm quite happy with that. We just need to smooth out. If I take the water out, um, we just need to smooth this out a little. It's not quite so steep going into the barrier. And then that's probably pretty good. Because no one wants to swim. They just want to use it for, for drinking. And we've got a little sprinkler there too. Um, this is quite a large area, actually. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to make it slightly smaller. Because I don't want to reduce their land area too much. I just want to give them uh, an, a way to easily drink without being, uh, like, uncomfortable about being too close to another animal, you know? There we go. That's better. That's a good size. This can be flattened slightly here. There you go. That's a good size water area. Now everyone can come around from different areas, but it doesn't take up all of their habitat. So when we look at the the habitat size, it's still, okay, we're still 10,000 square meters land and 500 square meters water. That's perfect. Okay, many guests think that tickets are underpriced. Well, that is music to our ears. Let's make it 16 and eight to get in. And there are overflowing bins. Yeah, there are overflowing bins. We do need to sort that out. But our caretaker's on the job. And I think they're going to do a good job. We could always get a second caretaker. But I just want to keep an eye on our finances. Because we've bought a lot of staff lately. And we've got a lot more animals. And that is going to increase our donations and everything. But it takes a little bit of time to get to get into the swing of it. So uh, let's. while well, we've got quite a lot of expenses, let's not do that quite yet. Now the last animals to go in here are our kangaroos. I'm just going to select all of them. We've got seven. Oh, and we've got two emus. Oh, oh, these aren't quite ready, these guys. So let's put all the ones that are ready into quarantine, into uh, into the habitat and take them out of quarantine. And in the meantime, let's put up some education for all our animals on the outside. Oh no, they've still not got the food. Okay, the emus have food. Everyone else doesn't. So we need to be careful with this habitat. Emus are happy. Let's select our... Oh, we didn't put herb scent marker in. Let's whack one of those over here. Right, now our next animals are the rednecked wallabies. These guys are going down this corner. They're going to have a hanging graze feeder. Um, they're going to have a... Let's give them a large... Hmm, maybe a medium food trough. They're not that big. So I don't think they will need... Oh, no, they're going to be in a big group. Let's give them a large food trough. And then they can have a graze ball feeder. They've already got herb scent markers. They'll use the same ones. This is the benefit of having quite similar animals. And the colorful balls and everything are already in here. So I think they're quite good with that, as long as they have these elements. In preparation for the kangaroo, let's give them a large food trough up here. Um, a graze ball feeder as well. And they get a hanging barrel feeder. That's cool. And another hanging graze feeder there. And maybe, seeing as everyone wants so many balls, let's put another couple of, of balls in the in, in the habitat. And the quokka want a small barrel feeder. 
You got a water jet rock. Oh, okay. Let's put this by the water for them. And then... Is that what we've unlocked for them so far? Okay. Oh, they have an arboreal feeding platform. Okay. Well, that's okay. Let's just put a large section in there. It doesn't actually need to be at elevation. So it's okay. We can put a tree around it if we need. Maybe we'll put a tree through the middle of this, just at the corner of the habitat. Now, education is next. Let's go media, devices, and education. And let's grab some education boards. And we need to find places to put them. So as this habitat is all glass, I'm probably just going to replace some sections with solid wood and have a little dedicated education section. Um, and then the rest of it will be, uh, will be viewable. So for emus, I'm going to put that around here, I think. We're going to have these three panels are going to become the education section. Okay, I quite like how over the top this is. I'm imagining that this isn't a TV and it's more like a poster or something. So I just feel like this is ridiculous. But we don't really have that kind of feature built into the game. Uh, I could move, the problem is if I move it back, it shrinks. So like it doesn't get all the words in. So I think we'll have this in, uh, but just imagining that that's more of a poster than a TV screen. <laughs> and then we've got some conservation boards in as well to just boost general guest education and an educational speaker here, just as well as the normal habitat boards that you get. So all of these are gonna contribute to the education of our guests. I'm gonna do exactly the same thing for the other animals in different sections around here now. Okay, it's been quite a hit to the finances, but that's okay. I think this is our staff room. We need to get a bigger staff room in the next episode as well. We can't do the kangaroos the same way we can the wallabies on the habitat education boards until we actually get them into the habitat. So they are on their way. Uh, there's, there's probably them right now. Yeah, coming in now <laughs> as I speak. Hey, there we go. Okay, so now they're in. Let's quickly change them and then we'll have a look at our kangaroo. Red kangaroo. Red kangaroo and red kangaroo and let's put our ticket prices up again because the game is actually yelling at us guests think it's way too cheap let's do 20 and 10 and see what we can do 
quarantine's passed on these guys. Let's just move them in as well. Some more emus, some more kangaroos. We're gonna need loads of names, guys. Please do send, uh, put some names in the comments. Because, oh my goodness, look at them, they're all in. <gasps> wow, look at these guys. That's amazing. <gasps> wow. So yeah, as I said, if you have any names that you want our animals to be called, please put them in the comments. I will go through and make sure I add them to our name list so that our, your, your own very name or your chosen name can be put on one of our animals and be in the zoo. Look at the little quokka walking around. They're so cute. There's no ATMs. That's a good sign, though. Uh, let's let's actually put an ATM in here right now. Just have two here, and the bin can move over slightly. Now people have a place to get some money out. And the same over here. We could probably get an ATM in here. We can change the colours for them as well. Um, that's maybe something we should do. But they're going to be more inclined to get their, get their money out now. <laughs> oh, and our final kangaroo is ready to be put in. There we go. We could probably check up on the numbers we've got in the next episode and just make sure that everyone's okay. Look at that. How beautiful is that? They're all in here. Now, we do need to add a shelter to this. Uh, they're going to need some kind of hard shelter. And we need to terrain paint it and put some plants in. But this is so cool, just having them all in here. <laughs> And as a, another beautiful day sets on this zoo. I just want to say, I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. If you have, please give it a like. It really helps the channel out. And I'll see you in the next one.